Greetings and welcome to E-Wheels. The E-model that we're looking at this week is the new Audi Q4 e-tron, which is not actually related to any current Audi model. It's actually more closely related. It's actually very closely related to um, the Volkswagen ID4 as well as the Skoda Enyaq. In fact, it's even built in the same uh, Zwickau factory as the ID4 and the ID3. And even though it doesn't look anything like the ID4, it is um, it actually rides on the same platform. It has the same battery pack, same motor, same tech, and um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, what are we looking at? Well, the front end is um, uh, unmistakably an Audi, even though um, this this grill is completely closed off. No air goes through there whatsoever. And even the Audi logo is, if you look at it from an angle, you can see that it's not actually um, a 3D logo, although it kind of looks like it. This is where this car hides um, some of its sensors. So the front end is unmistakably Audi. You've got some fake vintage here. I'm not sure what the purpose of this is, other than to um, hold the parking sensor. Air does go through here though, through this lower part. Uh, you have typical LED matrix headlights that you get on most uh, higher end Audis these days. They actually have quite a cool design. They have sequential turn signals. They are kind of cool, nothing new for an Audi again. The wheels on this particular car are um, 21 inch. They are optional aero wheels and they even have a little RS logo right here, right down there. And just like on the ID4, uh, these wheels are staggered. So uh, on the front here, we have 235 45s, while on the rear, we get uh, 255 40s. So yeah, two different widths. This vehicle is also an S-line car. So it has a slightly sportier front bumper arrangement as well as um, these uh, black painted sills which you can see they are more uh, aggressive I guess so from the side you really start to notice that this car really does have the ID4's proportions but at the same time it looks nothing like it or the Skoda ENIAC for that matter I think these um, creases here are uh, quite nice and I'm sure it's quite hard to stamp the metal in this way and this crease even goes down here, it's pretty cool. And this is mirrored in the rear as well, so the crease goes upward and it goes all the way around the rear. And speaking of the rear, there's a full width um, light bar, this part all the way around lights up very nice there are no tailpipes obviously because this is a this is a fully electric vehicle that's not actually related to a, any Audi model as I previously said my tester today is the is the 50 e-tron model which is a it's also a quattro model although I didn't find the word Quattro written anywhere on the vehicle. If you spot it, and I didn't, let us know in the comments. But I didn't find it anywhere. And Audi usually really likes to, um, to point out that its vehicles are Quattro, whichever vehicles are actually Quattro. So this vehicle, because it is the higher spec version, the highest spec actually, we'll get to the price and everything soon. Um, you can charge it via DC fast charger at up to 125 kilowatts. While uh, from an AC charger, this uh, example is limited to 11 kilowatts, but lower spec models are actually limited to just over seven kilowatts. So their onboard charger can't, held a, can't handle any more than seven kilowatts. This vehicle has a dual motor setup. It's exactly the same dual motor setup 
that you get in the Volkswagen ID4 GTX. So it gets uh, the same rear mounted motor, the 204 PS uh, electric motor that is present in the ID3 and the ID4 and all other models on the same platform that get the highest power rear motor. But to that, they add an additional front motor and together they make just shy of uh, 300 horsepower, 299, they say. Let's check out the space in the trunk. How do you open this? Is there a button? Ah, there is, it's tucked in there. So this is the trunk, the boot. You can store charging cables under here. I'm pretty sure you can adjust the, the height, can you? Uh, it should be one of those with an adjustable height. I think you can. You can slide this one level lower. And now I've messed everything up. Okay, it was super tidy. So yeah, this is the Q4 e-tron exterior. I hope you can see the vehicle well in this very harsh light. Oh yeah, and before we hop aboard, let's see what's under the hood. Just like in other um, VW Group products that are underpinned by this platform, um, the Q4 e-tron does not have a frunk. or uh, struts to hold it up. So yeah, this is what it looks like. It's exactly the same as in, uh, in the ID4 and the ENIAC that I got to drive before. As you can see, Volkswagen badges on everything and Valeo and other suppliers. Yeah, nothing especially interesting going on back here. The first thing that, uh, that strikes you when you climb aboard this vehicle is the shape of the steering wheel, which is, uh, it's, is it a hexagon? I think it is. So this part is flat, this part is flat. Um, these parts, I guess you can hold it. I, I mean, they want you to hold it like this, but it's uh, kind of strange. Maybe it grows on you after you drive the vehicle more. This vehicle is the S-Line, so it has the S proudly displayed here on the steering wheel. So my example is a top of the range S-Line model with pretty much all the bells and whistles. So that's why it has uh, these very nice sport seats with the quilting here. And they have this um, adjustable thigh support, which is great. The seats are fully electric. They have two memory positions. Yeah. Let's turn the vehicle on. So just like the ID4 and the ENIAC, you can turn this vehicle on just by stepping on the brake. So you're aboard with the key in your pocket and all you have to do is, and it comes alive. And it informs you that the passenger airbag is on, which is good. Some more information that nobody will ever read on here. So yeah. So the climate controls in this vehicle are quite unique. Let's uh, get them out of the way first. So you push on them to uh, reduce the setting and you pull on these uh, switches towards you to increase whatever it is that you want to uh, increase. I guess they are okay, but the fact that you have to uh, turn your hand in order to access this, seems it makes it seem kind of gimmicky, I guess. I don't know. The selector for the transmission is actually similar to the one in the Skoda ENIAC but it's positioned quite differently in here. So you can cycle through reverse, neutral, and either D or B mode. And it's displayed here, whether or not you're in D or B. You can cycle through the driving modes here. And what else? Here you can turn off the parking sensors and here you can adjust the go away. Here you can adjust the safety systems and cycle through them, I guess. Uh, da, 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 da. The infotainment is, um, I don't think it's actually, or I might be wrong, but it doesn't appear to be the same one that was in the ID4 and the ENIAC. 
I mean, those just looked like reskinned versions of the same system, whereas this just feels like uh, Audi's MMI, and I'm pretty sure it is. So even though this car is built in the same factory as the other two, it doesn't share their infotainment. Just like the other two though, or in fact, only the ID4 and the Volkswagen ID3 have this, but um, you have both touch and physical controls. Oh, here they're actually physical. So in the ID4, you can either swipe to um, access the different commands that you can issue through this uh, little panel here by swiping on it as well as pressing on it. But when you press, you don't actually press it. it um, you just move the panel a little bit and it sends haptic feedback and it makes it seem as if you are pressing it. But in the Q4 e-tron, that's an actual button click. The same goes for the right side. So here you can control the the infotainment. However, surprisingly, even though the screen is not the same one that you get in the ID4 or the ENIAC, so it's bigger in those cars, it's like a, a tiny smartphone sized, like five inch thing, but you can actually display the navigation on the screen. So yeah, materials quality. Soft up on the dash. It's, is it soft? It's, mm, it's, kind of hard to put your finger on the, what type of plastic this is, uh, literally, obviously. But I guess it is slightly rubberized, so it doesn't feel like the cheapest thing in the world. Lower down here on the, on the door cards. So it's here it's soft, soft, but then this is nasty. This is very, very uh, bad quality plastic for an Audi especially one that costs as much as this one does. I'm gonna to get to the price soon. So this is where you open the boot. Same uh, scratchy plastic. As you can imagine, here on the seat base, it's gonna be scratchy. And the, um, the rail things that the, sleet, that the seat slides on um, are actually exposed in this vehicle, as they would be in a much cheaper vehicle, so yeah. Here, again, hard, hard and nasty, hard and nasty, hard and nasty. I guess this uh, semi-gloss uh, type of plastic that tries to uh, imitate, uh, I guess, aluminium, it, uh, it does look better and it's reasonably high quality. So as you can see, the vehicle has turned itself off when I put it in park and I open the door and I just start it up again by pressing on the brake, everything comes online and you can just ride and you can just drive away. I find this console thing that's floating here quite interesting. You can you have a wireless charging pad underneath it, two USB-C's and the 12 volt um, nothing. I, I was going to say it's a old style cigarette lighter but um, no. It is actually an Audi Volkswagen branded placeholder. Two cup holders here that are kind of adaptive. So they, uh, as you can see, they have these little teeth here that you can uh, put a smaller drink in and they will still hold it. Let's check out the glove box. It's full of stuff. So on left-hand drive vehicles, the glove box is big, but on right-hand drive vehicles, uh, the fuse box takes up like this much space. Okay, so before we set off, let's check out how much this vehicle costs. Da 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 da. But it's So this is the final price. It's eighty-six thousand dollars euros. Sorry, eighty-six thousand euros. So that's a lot for a vehicle that starts at um, just under or just over forty thousand, actually, for a base rear-wheel drive vehicle with the one hundred and seventy-ish horsepower and the 58 kilowatt hour battery pack whose usable capacity is uh, 52. So this has the larger 77 kilowatt hour usable capacity uh, battery pack uh, whose uh, total capacity is actually 82. In the Skoda ENIAC for instance this model is called the 80 even though uh, there's no 80 anywhere in it. Anyway, so this has 300 horsepower two motors. I've driven this platform before, but I haven't actually driven um, 
the dual motor version of it. So I'm quite excited. This makes 300 horsepower and it sprints to 100 kilometers per hour in 6.2 seconds. And unlike all the other vehicles that I drove on this platform, uh, this one, let me just adjust my steering wheel real quick. This one actually has a higher top speed. So you can drive it at up to 180 kilometers per hour, or I guess that would be 112 miles an hour. Whereas other um, less powerful versions, they, um, they top out at 99 miles per hour or 160 kilometers per hour. Come on, Mr. Transit Van. And the way we go. So immediately, as soon as I set off, um, this uh, steering wheel is, uh, <laughs> is already feeling quite interesting. You do have to get used to it. I have seen this in other people's reviews, but they say that after you have gotten used to it, um, it becomes second nature and you actually enjoy it. So these people are blocking the roundabout because they want to go to McDonald's. But I can go around them, especially with 300 horsepower. Okay, so I'm going to put the vehicle in uh, efficient, comfort, auto and dynamic. So this also has adaptive dampers, which make the 21 inch wheels bearable. Although now that I'm in, uh, in that mode, in uh, the sport mode, it is firmed up quite a bit actually. I have to say that even though the quality of the plastics inside this vehicle uh, is not really up to Audi's usual standard, you actually do feel a bit more special in this than in the either the ID4 or the ENIAC. And when you stab it, Hmm. It hasn't pinned me to my seat, to be honest. I was expecting more from this 300 horsepower version. Are we sure we're in dynamic? We are in dynamic mode. Hmm. It's a bit weird. If this guy doesn't come up behind us, I'm going to briefly stop here and safely attempt a launch. Let's see how this goes. Yeah, it's quick, but I wouldn't call it uh, blisteringly quick. It does weigh 2.15 tons. So that's 2,150 kilos in this uh, twin motor uh, version, which is a about a hundred uh, kilos heavier than the single motor version with the 200 horsepower rear motor and the same battery pack. When it comes to its electricity consumption, um, if you really, really, really drive it, yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna hit him, don't worry. If you really, really drive it carefully and um, don't floor it, and you just drive it sensibly, you can probably get around 15, 18 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. While if you drive it, say, on the highway at highway speeds, you're looking at easily over 20. And if you drive it in the city, its real world range is gonna be around just shy of 400 kilometers maybe. While if you drive it on the, on the motorway, constantly at motorway speeds, you should still get a reliable 300 kilometers out of it. For reference, the uh, lower powered models that just have a single powered axle, uh, you can expect those with the smaller battery pack, sorry. You can expect that, so the base model, you can expect that to uh, take you around 100 kilometers less. So 200 on the highway 
and uh, 300 just uh, poodling around town without uh, really exploiting its uh, performance that much. So what else is left to say about this vehicle? Oh yeah, it is actually, to my knowledge, it is the first Audi with an augmented reality head-up display like you do in, get in a Volkswagen. So let me just set my destination here and I will try to show it in action. So yeah, I'm not sure if you can see it, but now that I've set a destination on the navigation, which is also displayed on uh, this central screen, which is configurable by the way, you have three modes. One that, two of them have um, actual fake dials displayed and one just makes you accept that this is an electric vehicle and you no longer need two dials. So yeah, as I was saying, now that I've set a destination, uh, an arrow has appeared right in front of me, uh, displayed, uh, projected rather, from down here, where the augmented reality head-up display is. So it's telling me that I have to make a right here. Can you see it? And as I am drawing ever closer to the junction where I'm supposed where I'm supposed to make the right, the arrow itself gets bigger. I'm pretty sure it's actually the exact same system as in the Volkswagen. I actually experienced this more in a in a Volkswagen ID3, but actually I think it looks a bit clearer. I'm not sure why that is. Maybe the windscreen is different or it's treated differently rather. I was actually prepared to um, not like this vehicle very much. I, I mean, after seeing, uh, doing some research and seeing reviews done by other people, um, not many of them liked it, but I, uh, I really don't mind it. I was expecting the interior to feel cheaper, I guess, but it doesn't, only when you actually start touching the materials, but visually just when you're aboard the vehicle, uh, I don't think you would mind them. Is it a vehicle that approaches, does it justify, are these plastics that you would find in a 90,000 uh, euro vehicle? Well, that's for you to decide and it depends on your priorities, I guess. But it's actually not as bad as I was expecting it to be. And since this is the, the top of the range model, uh, it also gets the new Sonos uh, audio system. I don't think I've seen this brand in another car. I might be mistaken, but I don't remember it. And it's uh, actually quite a good system. It's very, very um, crisp and pretty loud and uh, it has nice treble. I always have a problem with the treble because I often feel that there's not enough of it in many audio systems. But in this one, um, it's very good. It's loud, there's bass, there's clarity, and the tss -tss -tss sounds are also uh, very, very good. So yeah, the Audi Q4 e-tron. The Volkswagen ID.4's more posh cousin that's a bit more expensive. You can spec it out to be more expensive, but it's, um, it's actually pretty good. It does offer, surprisingly, a different experience to the, uh, to the ID.4. And honestly, I was expecting that after driving this car, I would still prefer the, um, the Skoda Enyaq. But actually, I think uh, this is my new uh, favorite crossover built on the MEB platform. I do like it more than the, than the Enyaq. Oh yeah, and the last thing I wanted to uh, mention about this vehicle is that um, varies the level of brake regen depending on what the vehicle sees in front of it. I'll tell you a little bit more about that after we cross this uh, roundabout. So as you can see, a roundabout symbol is being displayed in front of me and it's getting progressively larger as I approach the roundabout. Oh no, the limo is coming, I better hurry. So yeah, the vehicle varies the level of brake regen depending on what it sees in front of it. You can put it in B mode and just have full regen all the time. 
or you can leave it in D and then just use the paddles behind the steering wheel to vary uh, brake regen. And it is displayed here, next to the D. This vehicle can also be one pedal driven, by the way. It's, um, let's see if it grinds to a complete stop. I'm going to pull onto a side street and test it out. But I think it does. I think it stops the vehicle almost uh, fully. I am using the, the physical brakes, which by the way, on the rear, um, they are uh, drums, just like on the ID4 and the ENIAC. And you know that Volkswagen's argument to that is that um, by fitting it with the uh, drum brakes, you are essentially um, freed of having to maintain them. The manufacturer guarantees them for the lifetime of the vehicle. And it also justifies it through the fact that the vehicle also has a strong brake regen, which we're going to test after we make a lift here, as well as, uh, you know, you have fairly powerful brakes up front. So let's see if it stops. I've taken my foot off the go pedal. Does it completely stop or does it creep? So it just keeps creeping forward at five, six kilometers per hour when you lift off and you do have to apply the brake to completely stop the vehicle. This concludes the E-Wheels review of the Audi Q4 e-tron 50 model, the 50 Quattro, this is the top of the range version. Audi will also sell you a sportback version that has a fastback style rear end. And I'm sure many people will uh, go for that because it does look a bit sportier. But um, you do lose a bit of a boot capacity in that vehicle. But anyway, thank you for watching this video. Subscribe to um, the Best Electric Vehicle channel and we'll see you again in the next E-Wheels review. Take care.